It did well last week, though. It did. It did well last week, except for shaking the camera every once in a while. So, hello. We should be live now, I'm hoping. And, uh, and I hope the audio works again. That would be awesome. So, yeah. we have Erica back. Yay! Woo-hoo! I last week. refresh my screen here on the YouTube. She's watching, watching the chat. And uh, so Erica, Don, and I, at the end of last week, we had talked mm-hmm. about um, doing our um, more spindly stuff because we had missed Don mm-hmm. last time. Mm-hmm. Great. So uh, I grabbed a couple of things. <laughs> but, yes. uh, but Don, I wondered if you had... I have all of them. All of the things. She has all of the things. I spent the last half hour running around and finding all of them. That's so awesome. Yeah. I know. And watch. Wait. Okay. Okay. First spindle. Look, it even has a TurboTax CD on it. (laughs) That's the best part. There was still a stash of all the old, do you remember when you had to like load all the internet stuff? Like literally people, there was a time when you couldn't access the internet without one of these. Right. <laughs> and people sent them to you all the time, even oh, if you didn't want them. constantly in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. I know, we had fodder for like umpteen million CD spindles for quite a while with just a tiny little rubber grommet from your... Hardware store. And it, awesome. It remind me after I have I have a something else you can do with those those uh, CDs lingering. Oh, fun! I but uh, after we talk that. about spindling. That was uh, those AOL CDs are why yeah. I'm married to Andrew. <laughs> Millions of them. <laughs> yep. I just started sending them to him and saying, "Hey, there's this internet thing. You should come on and chat with me." Because he was in New York and I was in LA, so. <laughs> There's this internet thing. <laughs> Early internet dating. Heather, you're the zeitgeist oh. for everything. <laughs> I know, right? Hello. Yes, yes, oh. it was it was uh it was our density. <laughs> <laughs> you are my density. <laughs> oh, we saw that recently with the boys. They they loved it. But they didn't get the density joke because nobody says anything yeah. about destiny anymore. Right. And I, it never occurred to me that that had gone out of style. Hmm. It was weird. They get all sorts of other obscure stuff, but yeah, but not destiny jokes. Nope. Not the Back to the Future jokes. Yeah. Hmm. No, but now they get all the Doctor Brown jokes and the uh, flaming tracks, tire tracks. <laughs> cool. They've seen a couple of those jokes since then and go, ah. Now they understand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Spindles. Okay. Next spindle. You ready for this one? Do you yeah. remember this one? <gasps> I do. Because this is the one you sent me. Yay. This is the first spindle. Heather sent me this spindle because I was really frustrated with the big clunky spindle. And she was like, you just need something better to work with. <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> and she was right. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's not an, an expensive spindle by any means, but it's really well balanced. And I still use it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Any idea what brand it is and all that? Um, actually, no. You know, the bottom says it's, um, the bottom says black lim- limbo, limba, and the initials are JMH. Limba? It's a Rush Limbaugh spindle? <laughs> no, hopefully not. No, and I'm trying to You're remember. You're looking at it backwards, but. I'm trying to remember when I got it. Yeah. I don't know. That's what the bottom says. And it has a nice little notch in it, which I like. I do have a preference for notched spindles. Oh, yes. Yep. Mine has a notch, too. Yeah. Which, if I remember, Heather, you actually had to have him cut the notch, I think. That was my memory, too. I was sitting here yeah. going, did I have them do that? I think I did. Yeah, I think you had them notch it. Yeah, so those were my first couple of spindles. Um, and then I, like, bought a bunch of expensive spindles. <laughs> uh, Hen- Henry, yeah. <clears throat> Henry, yeah. 
in uh, in the chat room says that the CV spindle is great for showing kids, but you need a nice one. And she loves her Ashford spindle. Yeah, I, an nice Ash. Ones. I do not have an Ashford. I've never spun on an Ashford before. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah, I got off on a on a pretty spindle kick for a while, but I picked really well because I still use them all um, because they're really nice. So I'll cover up. I'll cover up the name on this one and see if you guys know what it is. Is this one? Oh, do you know? Yeah. You not a KCL Woods. You can't buy them anymore. It's not a Bosworth. It's um. It's uh. I had one. I may still. Have one. <laughs> it's a uh, Kundert. Oh. oh. Yeah, I wish I had more of these because I adore the spindle, but you can't get them anymore. The hook on that one, I remember being particularly because yeah. yeah, it's pointy. Yeah, it's like angled. Yeah, yeah. it's like angled. Oh wow! That yeah. was one cool. of the things. I like it. Uh, the hook those, is like the best part. For those, for those listening at home, it's it's more of a rectangular hook instead of a yeah. curved. Hook. Not, it's like not it's square. square. Yeah, the hooked part yeah. is actually squared. So at the very top, um, there's a point. So it's like the top point of a diamond. Mm -hmm. Which I quite like. And that that thing, that's what we, when when you weren't here, I had shown um, my homemade spindles where if you take the, a cup hook mm -hmm. and you tweak the, the end of it to pull it up so that the curved part is actually horizontal to the floor. Right. And holding it, it gives you that same kind of central alignment so that you can get a true spindle and not have it wobble all over the place. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's, that's what I liked about those. Yeah. We have uh, we have a couple other uh, uh, pieces of input about homemade spindles. Um, one person, I I don't know how to pr pronounce your screen name. A C E I A T X. I a a C I I'm probably hacking it. My apologies. Says uh, his or her are mostly uh, homemade wooden wheels and dowels from the craft store. Yeah, I've and, seen people do that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also, but the people around there teach kids on spindles made from potatoes or rocks that have holes in them. Ah. A potato spindle, that would be interesting. Yeah. And uh, Crooked Knits has a turtle made 3D printed Turkish spindle. Oh, oh fun. That sounds cool. Yes, there's That's a whole dealy on Etsy, 3D printed spindles all over the place. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, oh, uh, this, the name I can't pronounce, it says uh, Robin. <laughs> that's easier. <laughs> easier than the screen name, Robin. Assuming that's Robin she, not Robin he, but I could be wrong. I should not assume. I think um, it's Robin she, because we were chatting last week. Ah, okay. Nice. So then I have one more spindle. Well, I actually have a couple spindles that aren't in use. I have all my support spindles. I have two really nice wooden support spindles. I think one's walnut and one's maple. They're both different configurations. Um, and I just haven't, I haven't come to terms. And then a little tockly. Um, I haven't come to terms with support spindling yet. Have you, <laughs> have you done any cotton at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've tried. I, I just can't. I don't know. I haven't gotten a groove with support spindling yet, so I will keep working on it. That was. Um, I didn't get comfortable with it until I uh, got the charka, that little book charka, well, and then and then it made sense. Because it's a charka. Everybody I know who has a charka loves it. Yeah. <laughs> it is, they're pretty awesome. And in fact, I was looking for mine right before this, and I realize I, I put it someplace very intelligent, I'm sure, that is so smart that I can't remember where it is. Yeah. So. That's a, you'll come across it one day. I will, and then I'll share it. Yeah. <laughs> Super <laughs> awesome. So here's another um, cool spindle that I actually need a bit of advice for. Ooh. Um, We're full of opinions. <laughs> yeah, good, because this one's a mess. Um, so this Ooh. is... A Spanish peacock spindle I got the very first year he was at Maryland, and it's made out of it's made out of what does it look like? <laughs> Clay. Yeah, yeah, it's made out of polymer, 
but it is sticky. Wow. So the fiber, I mean, literally, can you see how the fiber sticks to it? Oh, oh that's not I good. No. So my, I want to know, does anybody know, can you sand these down, can you sand this down and finish it with something else that wouldn't be sticky? Oh. Because, like, when, hmm. it doesn't necessarily feel sticky when I run my hand around it, but if you spin with it, it just, whoa. Yeah, that's definitely the the coating on it because I have yeah I, I have the polymer clay stuff. So what, you know what? I just sand it down and get rid of the top layer. And just get rid of the top layer, and do you think the clay will just be fine? Yeah, mine. Are, I mean, as long as you're not gonna go out in the rain, right? To spindle. We'll try it and report back. See what happens. Um, yeah. Tara, Tara Worsterweight says you can use water-based uh, wood varnish. Water-based wood varnish. Oh, I don't have mm -hmm. any scratch paper. I got it. I'm writing it down for you. Yeah. Okay. And Tammy saw something, uh, has seen something at fiber shows that sounds really amazing. She's not even a spinner, and they were hard to walk away from. Um, Teeny tiny spindles made with a gemstone disc bead and a small stick, and they're put together to form a necklace. And she said, even as a non spinner, she almost wanted to buy one. <laughs> wow. That means at heart you really are a spinner. <laughs> That's right, Tammy. It's only a matter of time. Before yeah, that you tiny it. little <laughs> necklace spindle, <laughs> you would find a way to spin with it. <laughs> yep. Anyway, it's a really, I like it because it's, um, you know, it's blue and white, swirly, marbly, and it has a little bit of sparkliness in I it, too. I can see the spark. Oops. Yeah, and it just has a plain maple shaft. I think. And he has cool. this, can you see the hook of my head? It's like a corkscrew. That's the kind I was talking about, The when you bend the, cor the cup hook up yeah. so that it's horizontal. That's what I did to all my homemade ones. Yeah. I love it. So, there's that. We'll see if I can get it more functional. I can't believe he molded the polymer that well and got it both balanced and so symmetrical. I wonder if he had a mold. And it feels like it's carved. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Never heard of carving polymer. Interesting. I don't know. Weird. But I, um, he only had the one. It was a prototype. So You're I don't. Cool. Yeah, I don't. I know, right? <laughs> So those are those are not oh one more not in action right now. Teeny little Jenkins Turkish doesn't have anything on it. Those are so pretty. I know and they're fun. I just like to hold it and spin it. I I, <laughs> I, I right because they are really really bad. Yeah. I've done that before. Where you they just spin. spin. <laughs> but I found with those where you have to do the half hitch at the top. Mm -hmm. I had the hardest time. Keeping my half hitch. Hitching. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I do not have a problem. I have to say, with these, I only the only ones I have like this. I have two Jenkins, and the other one I'll show you in a second. Actually, I can probably find it and show it to you now. Um, the only two I have are Jenkins, and I I don't have a problem with them. At which I thought I would, because I was like, really? You have to, it felt very, like, contortion-y after using a drop spindle <laughs> to have to do this half hitch thing. Yep. Um, By the way, Tammy says she's saving spinning for retirement. Ah, nice. Has, it's good to have things to look forward to. That's right. Get rid of the current stash. Make way for the new fiber stash. <laughs> ah, good luck. Dream on, dream on. <laughs> None of it will ever go away. Because it reproduces when you're not looking. <laughs> oh, it does. I tell you. So here's the big one. Wow. And it has some merino on it. Ooh, pretty. It's green. It's and like browns. A, yeah, greens and browns. Here's the other turtle that's already finished. That's like I would say more of a gold tone kind of green and brown, a little yeah. bit. That's like early autumn colors where you still got the greens there. Yeah, yeah, and that one was, um, that fiber is hand-painted merino top from the Fiber Studio here in Minneapolis, which, alas, is not with us anymore. Oh, so. that's the place that has has had such good stuff in your stash. That's... 
They have lovely. They have lovely stuff. Or they had lovely stuff. It was a neat. It was small. It was a very small shop, but she had a very um, well put together collection of stuff in there. And did you say is there a, a yarn crawl or a um, something? There like is. That? Yep. The shop hop in the Twin Cities is starts on Thursday, so it'll go Thursday, Ooh. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and the theme this year is inspired by literature. So every uh, shop, <laughs> yeah, every shop does a pattern um, and a yarn, especially dyed yarn. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the themes are. I know one because he popped the secret already. Stephen B um, is doing Willy Wonka, which isn't surprising if you you know Stephen B, right, Heather? Yeah. <laughs> That's Willy Wonka is very apt, and I can't kind of can't wait to yeah. see what he does with that. Because it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> that's very yeah, that fits. Yeah, yeah. But you should watch. Actually, if you watch the Hot Right Now patterns on Ravelry over the weekend, you'll see a ton of free patterns come up from the yarn shops in the Twin Cities. And I think actually, I think Stevens is already up there. Really? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's like a slouchy ear flap. With hat with. Is it the adornments, <laughs> yeah. adornments, but it is cute. Yeah. So if you're around Ravelry this weekend, you should see those patterns pop up. They're usually on the front. Most of them are usually on the front page. Yeah. Send me um, send me a link, and I'll put it and, up both on the YouTube and on the show notes. Yeah. And uh, Crooked Knit says that this weekend is also the Long Island Yarn Crawl. Oh, fun! So if anybody's out in Long Island, Long Island, go to the Yarn Crawl out there. Yeah, we have a big weekend for fiber in the Twin Cities because the um, the Textile Center, which is a nonprofit, um, really cool organization in the Twin Cities, they have their garage sale this weekend um, on Saturday, and it's a big thing. <laughs> it's huge, and it it funds most of their programming. Um, so if you're in the Twin Cities, check that out. It's pretty fun, but be prepared for crowdiness. Yeah, I was gonna say that's gonna be kind of popular. It is, yeah. It generally, it generally is, <laughs> and people maybe get a little um, assertive <laughs> first thing in the morning. Let's maybe say that. Didn't yeah. didn't we notice that on when we were in Alaska that that for some shopping for fiber is a full body contact sport. It is a contact sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm more of a sit back and watch the scrum and then go sweep up the things that they missed in their... Or dropped. Uh, or dropped, yeah. <laughs> in their big... So. I seem to recall getting one of those little tiny circular needles for um, socks. Mm -hmm. There was somebody on the on the trip who was buying them everywhere. Everywhere, and no one else could get a single one. Yeah, she got yeah. mad. I got that <laughs> one. I know. And you know what? I have a whole set of those now. No way! I do! And they happen to be right here. I have a whole set of Haya Hayas. <gasps> I love theirs. Yeah. And they're just, they're so cute. They're just tiny. Tiny little sock needles. Yeah. Do your hands ever cramp up when you use them? Um, they don't. They're not, a, these aren't a problem for me. And I think it's because the needle part is so short. Yep. So they, yeah, they're, you don't have to, yeah. There's not as much resistance, I think. So. That's cool. I yeah. like Hayahayas a lot. I, they're so pointy. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mm -hmm. like them very much, very much. That's funny that those are sitting there in my, um, in with the rest of my spinning. Um, so my, my absolute favorite, my oh. big gold lane. Yes. This is the first really expensive spindle I bought, and I have to say, worth every mm. single Penny. <laughs> Adore That's this pretty. spindle. Yeah, yeah. I, it's tiger. Um, what do they call it? Tiger's eye? The wood? That's really um, big. Yeah, and I don't, I don't polish my brass, so it stays patinaed. Um, it's just a full, this one, for people, for those listening at home, this one is just, it's a solid, it's a solid wood with just the brass ring, the brass ring. Um, and it's the big one, the big heavy one, and it's probably the it's this is probably the spindle I use the most. Um, I find it super versatile. 
Um, I can spin relatively thin on it, and I ply almost everything on this spindle. I was going to say that. Whether it's thin. thick or thin. Yeah. I love the Goldings for, for plying especially because the... I don't know if, if, if people haven't spun with them before, it may not be apparent, but with that that uh, ringlet around the outside, the, the border around the outside, that's, yeah. that's it is what brass, and it's heavy. Yep, it, but, they're heavy. Mm -hmm. But they are so well balanced that once yeah. you set it spinning, it'll spin forever. Yep, I love, mm -hmm. I absolutely, I love, love, love this spindle. This one right now has some, um, it's a sari silk blend. Yay. Ooh. Yeah. And I got it. That was from the Fiber Studio too in Minneapolis. So it has. It just has those random bits of bright colored silk um, throughout it. I love that. A dark, when you like say a dark brown fiber. Is, when you say a spindle is heavy, what do you mean? What counts as a heavy spindle? Oh, well, you know, I don't know all the. I don't know all the weights on mine. I um, know. I know that twenty. Anything under twenty-eight grams is going to be uh, something you could do. Uh, it's that's under an ounce, and it it's something that you could do very fine if you're not too young. So twenty eight mm. grams was my my midpoint, but I seem to recall that my at least they're an ounce and, and yeah. ounce and a half, if not two, and mine is a smaller size than yours. Yeah, they're that's a big one. It's heavy. I don't, and I'm sorry, I just don't know how much it weighs. I was looking. Huh. <clears throat> I thought my tiny one was in the basket too, but it's not. Um, but I, which means I don't know where my silk project is, <laughs> oh, no. because I have a small golding as well. Um, you know the mm -hmm. one that's about a, less than a two-inch diameter. Yep. Um, that's all cut out, and it. Um, I spin silk top on that all the time. I love it. That yeah, that's awesome. the. Those two spindles pretty much always have something on them. And I'm so sorry it's not here. I'll have to... Now I'm worried about where it is. Um, <laughs> hopefully one of the kids didn't take it. Uh, I'll have to look. I'll have to do some digging and find it because it probably has some really pretty silk on it. That was one of the things that I was looking for. <clears throat> I was looking for the stuff that I didn't show last time. And I found... Oh, I thought I found, but I did find, I didn't find what I thought I was looking for. I don't know if that even registers as making sense at all, but I did find, and I think, Dawn, you might have been the reason that I initially got these. Um, if people if people don't spin, then you probably haven't seen these before. They are silk handkerchiefs. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they right? fun. They're yes. so fun. They are. They are a lot of fun, and they are more versatile than I thought they would be. So this is a stack. This has to be, I don't know. That's a gajillion. That's a gajillion. <laughs> that's got to be close to, like, 40. Yeah, of that, it's, <clears throat> that's a lot of silk hankies. But to, but to and for, for those listening, it does just look like a, a bunch of tie-dyed <laughs> handkerchiefs. You know, and um, but it's they're actually thinner than they look. So what looks like one is actually probably eight, <laughs> at, at least. In fact, I was going to try peeling one off to show everybody because it is such a um, a strange thing. And if you have um, hangnails or if your hands are dry, it will stick and grab yes. all the little ends of the silk, which is kind of annoying. But let's see if I can get this. These are, um, it's all like russet. It's Dawn's colors. It's all russets and golds and greens and, um, yeah, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Some greens and golds and, greens yeah, and gold. dusty, dusty okay, reds and so purples. That is the top layer of what, you know what it reminds me of actually? It reminds me of those store bought, um, the flaky biscuits. That you can get in the tube that have the oh layers. yes that's exactly yes. what it's like when you pull them apart yeah so, or phyllo dough or phyllo dough so when you pull it apart one of the things you can do is you can spin with it just by taking an end and pulling it and attaching it to whatever fiber you're spinning but the other thing you can do if you want to play with these before you get into spinning is you can just pull a piece off and it keeps going. And so you can just knit with it straight. And that's actually what I thought I brought was the bag that has the socks that I started. Yeah. So, I have a set of, I have a pair of mittens started. <laughs> great. They're supposed so to be amazing. Awesome. They're supposed to make amazing mittens. Yeah. Yeah. 
and there you can see where I'm pulling it, pulling the top layer off. That's hard to photograph. How the heck do you do that? It's all foofy. Oh. So fun, fun with silk. Yeah. And I still have, remember last time, it was in Maryland. Remember the place that they have all the silk top and uh -huh. we, split all, we split all those bags? I still am working through those because it spins so fine yeah. that even half of one of those bags, the project just goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> and we must have split like, what, four or five colors? At least. At yeah. least. And I mean, they're gorgeous. <clears throat> yeah, it's like enough silk to last me the rest of my life, I think. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, that was, oh, and I grabbed, I grabbed the other thing, the silk. So, what is it? Silk? I guess it's top. But it's, um, as far as drafting goes, that was the, one of the things I was trying to think of. That one, look, is that raw silk? I don't know. I'm no. because it's a little grabbier. It is grabby. <clears throat> you know, it looks it looks raw from down here. Yeah. But once I got it up here and started to draft it, it's really smooth. Yeah. I will have to. I also have um. The other way I really, really, really love to spin silk. Um, and again, you're gonna get tired of me saying this. Briar rose fibers. <laughs> She has she dyes what she calls silk bricks, um, and it's really neat. It's it's even hard to describe, but I have one upstairs, and I'll grab it for next week. Um, but it drafts so smoothly, and for people who say, "Oh, I can't do silk because it's too slick," um, I think right. this would be a really great preparation if you want to try. Hmm. If you want to try spinning silk, I think it would be a really good. And it's 100% um, silk? Yep. That's a great idea. Ah, yeah. That might, I, I might need to try that because I have tried silk and just couldn't do I can do a silk merino blend, but I couldn't do the straight silk. It was just a mess. Yeah. I'll, um, brick. I'll <laughs> pull that out for next week. <laughs> I have my list of find this, find that, find the other thing. <laughs> um, so I have a huge spinning project that I've been working on for probably three years now. Um, and I'm using these spindles. Um, these are both maple. Pretty. Um, this one's bird's eye. Are they kunderts again? No, these are by a local spindle maker, and that's what I was at the beginning. I was looking it up, um, but he's his Etsy store is actually on hiatus. Um, it's the Dragonfly Workshop. Um, Great name. Yeah, he has a shop. He usually has stuff for sale um, at our uh, spring sale in May at Shepherd's Harvest. Um, or you might find it with some local shops at the yarnery here in St. Paul on Grand Avenue usually, um, at least they used to, carry his spindles. And they're very affordable. I mean, these are $25 spindles, and they're gorgeous. Wow. They're hand-turned, and they have a lot of detail to them, and they are impeccably balanced. So oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, they're very, they're very, very nice. Um, and they spin, they spin forever. They spin super well. So the project that I'm working on with those, um, I bought a six-pound Cormo fleece. Wow. Three That's years cute. ago at Shepherd's Harvest, and I hand washed it, wow. and it was beautiful. And I'm still spinning it. <laughs> wow. So there's some singles. I haven't applied any yet. But wow. I am, I'm slowly working through it on spindles, and I think I have, at last count, I think I have eight ounces left. I think I have eight one-ounce bumps left. Wow. What so, are you going to do with it? i get it all applied first. <laughs> I might just spin it forever. I know. Um, I was actually thinking the same thing Robin just popped in with. <clears throat> yeah. Your singles are so even. I, it will, it's spindles, I think, um, and, and the fiber, because Cormo, butter, it is like plain butter, and it, or like spinning butter, and it's so springy, um, it is, 
it's a special fiber. Yeah, I like cornmeal. I think too. yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, and I actually last summer, last May, even though I'm not even close to done to this one, what did I do? Started knitting. Bought another one. Oh, bought another one. <laughs> So I have another one of her fleeces in the basement, and it was like this total panic moment. And the one I have in the basement is a dark chocolatey brown. I'll pull that one out to show you sometime. Um, I panicked because she said they were having to move the farm, and she didn't know how much of her flax she was going to be able to keep intact, and if she was going to have, you know, fleece the next year. And into, and I was like, ah! Oh my god. <laughs> This might, you know, it might be the last fleece I can get from Jill. So now I have another one in the basement. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how, how yarn balls and uh, fleeces have a funny way of multiplying. Yeah. They're like yeah. yeah, kind of. A little bit. So I have a lot of these light to medium gray. Those are gorgeous. Toilet paper rolls full of singles that someday, <laughs> someday I will buy when I get them all fun. <laughs> I like. I yeah. Like. So that's my merit. That's my marathon project on um, those other spindles. And then I was doing. I can't remember what was I playing with. <clears throat> this one was an experiment, and I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was doing it from the fold. Um. I don't know. I was doing a different technique with these, and I don't even know whose spindle this is. Um, I don't use it very often. Um, it's rather small. Um, it has looks like kind of a lighter, maybe I don't know, maybe maple, uh, maybe maple, but it's got those like dark streaks in it, so I don't know. Mm. Um, and then I think the shaft is maybe some more of the tigers, um, or maybe bird's eye. Um, but I don't remember who I bought this at a, one of the yarn festivals, and I don't remember. I don't remember whose it is. Um, it spins okay. It's not my favorite. Um, and like I said, I was doing something odd <laughs> with the yarn um, or with the fiber when I spun it. It was something new that I was trying, and now I don't. I didn't write it down, and now I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Yeah. So if I continue with it, oh, you know what? No. Hmm. Maybe it was from the fold. I think maybe I was spinning from the fold with this stuff. Hey, we have a, a a fleece question. Yeah. Um. Uh. Do you, how do you card your fleece? Do you, I'm assuming they're just raw fleeces because you you talked about cleaning it. Uh, the Cormo was a raw fleece. Yep. Um, and actually, I've made a, a bunch of bats in my past too. I have a, a drum carter um, nice. that has a, a fine. What do they call it? Carpet? Is that what they call it? That's what I was thinking. It was carpet. Cloth. I think they cloth. call it cloth. cloth. Yes, cloth Later. on it. Um, and it it actually worked super well. Uh, most people told me, you know, don't card the. Don't card the Cormo. Um, you should comb it. Um, and I tried combing it, and it wasn't. I wasn't getting what I wanted. I wanted something that was going to be super airy and springy, um, and it worked beautifully on the drum carter. And then I, <clears throat> I pulled. I don't have any of the balls here. I pulled it out into. I used a diz off of the drum, and I just pulled it off of the drum through the diz. Um, which was actually, it's not even a diz, it's a bead. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. It's one of those kids, <laughs> those plastic kid, those cheap plastic kids beads <laughs> that you bought in the big tubs to keep your kids entertained. You know? It's oh, not a yes. Diz. It's an old kid's bead. <laughs> what would you say the diameter of the hole was? Um, smaller than a dime? Yes, it was smaller than a dime. The hole, it was probably half the diameter of a dime. So did you use a tiny oh, little, Henrietta is asking too, did you use a tiny little yeah. hook to hook it through the, the bead or did you pull some off and kind of... I just pulled some off and, and did that thing with your fingers <laughs> and yeah, and just stuck it through the bead, um, you know, and then I pulled straight from the drum and it 
it turned into beautiful roving. I tried doing that, and I hmm. I had a hard time, but I wasn't using Cormo. Uh, and yeah. I wonder, because I, I can't believe that people said to comb it. Comb, yeah, that was the, everybody said I'd have a mess of naps. Well, if I you had, you so, had the fine cloth. Yeah, and yeah. Well, and I was super careful with how I washed it, and I was super careful with um, how I fed. I fed it su really lightly into um, into the carter. Um, but yeah, it was a dream to card, and it the uh, again. I will bring some of those next week to show you. Um, the the balls of roving are just like little clouds of grayness. They're Where really you, nice. Which drum carter did, company did you go with? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> it's a it has the name written on it. He's from Can. I want to say Canada. Uh huh. Mm. I had one. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, and I think that's who made the one that I had, and I can't remember the name of it either. I actually think we got it from Susan's Fiber mm. Barn. Mm hmm Jenny the Potter and I bought it together. Actually. That's so smart. Um, They're not, they aren't cheap, but boy, are they yeah. nice to have. Yeah, it's and it, talk about the most addictive thing in the world to do is making bats. It's true. Oh, my kids love it. They oh. they love cranking the the drum yeah. carter. No, oh, it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get color, I always really liked it if you had the different colored. You know, if you the natural something. ones. Well, and, and <clears throat> natural, but if you had dyed different colors and then you fed them in, you know, just randomly to see yeah. what happened. Mm -hmm. The blending that you could get is just so yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's, that's what I use mine for, is for blending colors. Or like I, that 100% silk that I couldn't spin, I have been uh, blending it in with some wool. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That I Since I don't have the drum carter anymore, all of that dog hair... Hand-carded? Yeah. Wow. Because I'm committed, or committable, <laughs> or soon to be committed. One of the, one of those. Yeah. But it's uh, that was what that was the first time that I really missed having the drum carter. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had mine out since I processed the Cormo. Um, actually, that's not true. I have some. I have to figure out what to do with this stuff because it did not work on the Carter. I have an extremely fine, uh, thin Shetland cross fleece that I washed, and it is extremely fine. Um, and it did not. It was not working on the drum Carter, so I think I have to try something different. That one might need combs. Wow. We'll see, because it's a really kind of a long staple. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Well, I'll just have to have a fleece show at some point in time too. That won't be a lot of. That won't be very interesting to listen to on the audio, but you know, it'll be a quick cut. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We were even talking about that, doing some kind of um, taking taking the if I do it on the phone, taking the camera outside and and washing a fleece. Mm, nice. Or some of the fleece, anyway. Yeah, wash wash fleece along. <laughs> you could do could give us a uh, what do I want to call it a special edition or special episode of Crafty Chat. There you go. Not on a Tuesday <laughs> or something. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Yeah. Special that's very fun. Starting very cool. Like that. <clears throat> yeah. So that is my well, spin. That's all the spinning stuff I have. But I did bring. I have I a go ahead. I was to say I have a tiny bit. Um, Heather had asked um, how heavy my spindle was, and I didn't know, but it's finally uh, empty, so I could weigh it. <laughs> so it's uh, two ounces, and it's uh, I'm not looking at the right thing, so I can't see if you're seeing this. Uh, and I don't know uh, if Amy King is watching, Amy. Uh, I don't remember what brand this was, but you sold it to my husband, so maybe you'll recognize it. It doesn't say on it. 
but I love it. And it has the little notch, too, like you were talking about. I, I gotta have a notch. And while I was on vacation the past week, I have not been spinning. My, I mean, I haven't been knitting. My knitting mojo has been gone. But I spun. So Whoa. nice. They're they're. Uh, this is my high class. Not in between the uh, spindle and the uh, storage bobbin. I have them on bendy straws. So I got. You are more talented than I am because I cannot transfer something from a spindle to a bendy straw to save my life. And I must ha just have exactly the right size bendy straws for the nice. spindle I have. I just put it right over and I slip right on. And now that I said that, next time I try to do it, it's not going to work. Um, <laughs> I will have cursed you. <laughs> but um, I've already got three storage spindles of this stuff um, waiting for this to join it. And I have, out of my eight ounces total, I have two and a half ounces left. So Wow. Nice. So, my, my pretty be myself. Uh, I like that. And the, the only other thing I, I have um, after having had spring break off is um, a moment of silence for nine rubies. They lasted ten years, oh. and they are now gone, and I am sad. Oh. Um, they were a great mother-daughter owned shop in San Mateo. Um, so now I I only know of one shop on the be, south of San Francisco before before about Palo Alto and that's the one walking distance from my house in South San Francisco. Um, so that we've got like 30 miles between yarn shops. So that's, that's not good. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm but they were they were a great little shop, um, but just was time. So um, we say farewell uh, to nine rupees. Mwah. Moment of silence there. Um, so, oh, and uh, Cricket Knits uses a knitting needle to slide her uh, her, her singles off of the. Uh, Spindle. She said the needle's about the same diameter as the spindle shaft. So I've been able that's to do good. That I've also metal knitting needles. I've also oh, used chopsticks for that. I've can tried chopsticks do? too. You can do chopsticks. chopsticks. They get so sticky for me. Ah, uh, it must have been the right chopstick. The last time I tried chopsticks, it didn't work. This this was before I found my my bendy straws. I couldn't remember where I had put them. This is a skewer like for a barbecue, so this is totally skinny, bendable skewer thing. So Whatever works. It's a yarn kebab. <laughs> Best kind of kebab. Nice. So. The only thing I have is my finished Cthulhu. Yay! Ah! Yeah, he's got his little wings and um, and uh, thing two has been taking him to school. I just got lucky that he did not take off with the sucker today. <laughs> I looked everywhere. I used to have safety eyes, and I didn't, but then I found these buttons that look like eyes. Nice. And I thought... And they're red, which is, you know, quite appropriate. Right. How, how bad could that be? So I think I, put, I think I put a link to the pattern, not last Crafty Chat, but the week before when I first started it. But it's a great little pattern and free. He's cute. He is cute. He's a little cute Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. was, is there any particular occasion for uh, for the Cthulhu, or you just felt you needed a Cthulhu? No, it was me digging around in old stash and finding glow-in-the-dark yarn. Because what are you going to uh, make out of glow-in-the-dark yarn? You're going to make a Cthulhu. <laughs> Especially glow-in-the-dark green. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I. It spoke to me. I know, right? I Robin is saying, oh, I need oh, you did get, you bookmarked it. Good, good, good. Yes, Tara, Tara pinged me on Facebook and said, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord Enslaver? <laughs> I said, yes. Always. As a matter of fact, I do. I have a Cthulhu for 2016 presidential banner. 
that I, I found on, on Facebook. And I've been following his Twitter feed. He is the guy, whoever it is who's doing that particular Twitter feed is hilarious. And is it just at Cthulhu for president? Um, it may be Cthulhu 2016. Okay. Because Lord knows I need some levity, levity to my presidential election year. I know. <laughs> I just I just feel that Cthulhu is the, what is it? <laughs> the, the, it's not the lesser of two evils. It is, um. Greater of, no. It, I think it is. It might be the greater of, the greater of two evils or the greater of three evils or something is their, their tagline. Of course, I can't remember it now, but it did crack me up. It was good. Yep, it is. <clears throat> it, oh, oh, there's several Heather Cthulhu 2016s. <gasps> I will find the right one and, and is it on so there's Twitter. one well there's Cthulhu there's at Cthulhu there's at Cthulhu underscore 2016 and then there's just Cthulhu 2016 which is at Illuminatus that might be it that might be it I you think it's that one yeah I'm living the high life in Durango mm, no maybe <laughs> I not. don't think so yeah maybe not. Uh, I think it's not that one. We'll go look at the other one. I think that might not be it. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with Durango, just that I, I don't think that's this. It's happen. this one. It's the Cthulhu underscore 2016. Ancient subterranean evil running for president as independent. Policies include oppression of humanity, releasing elder gods, sensible immigration policies. That's the one. <laughs> yep. Oh, we're all for releasing those elder gods, aren't we? You know, Which do you know that they've casted, right? American gods. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. We're I've, excited. I have only seen. <laughs> I have only seen uh, two casting notifications. And if if people who are listening haven't read American Gods, oh, read American Gods. Yeah, I have one friend who I love who hated the book, and I I think I think it was because she didn't pick up on. Um, who everyone was early enough. Oh! Be. Because it's it's like like a lot of Neil Gaiman's Sandman yeah. comics. You know, every every pantheon gets represented at some point right. in Sandman. So she wasn't picking up on the tropes. No, I don't think okay. she was. And it and and you know, like with Clive Barker, any of them, when he, when Neil Gaiman decides he wants to do something that is horror focused, yeah, there are some moments of true horror. Especially oh, yeah. parents in that book. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but when it comes down to his the philosophy of well, people travel to this country and it's unique because people mm -hmm. travel to this country and they bring their gods. Bring their them. gods with them. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, kind of forget. Yeah. Them. Yeah. The gods are they're so stuck there. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're out of work. So <laughs> what are they gonna do? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, excited to see what they do with that. I I. As long as Neil Gaiman signs off on the script, I will be thrilled. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like uh, Worcester Wade is pretty darn excited about it too. Over the flipping moon, she says. <laughs> <clears throat> that should be fun. Yeah. I was looking. I was looking forward to that too. And there was, there was something else. There was something else bookish. Did you did you see that they're building the Bronte Parsonage up at Peniston Crag? Mm -mm. I no. did see that. They are building the Bronte Parsonage up at Peniston Crag for a Bronte biopic that's coming out this fall for the, whatever it is, anniversary of Charlotte's birth. And um, and the when I first saw the picture, I was like, wait a minute, there are no trees. There's no dark graveyard. There's none of that stuff that was all that. Well, it wasn't there in 1840, Heather. Mm. So the Parsonage really was kind of uh, on a windswept moor at the time. And when you go there now, it's very wooded and uh, kind of dark and quiet. And the graveyard was there when the kids were growing up, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as sheltered. So that would have been really, really windy and bleak when they were growing up there. But I'm interesting. I am looking forward to that very yeah. much so. Because that's, uh, the, the people the people in Howarth have been calling it uh, an enormous eyesore and a huge mistake and why on God's green earth are they building this? And everybody keeps going, 
it's just a wooden frame now because it's a set and it's going <laughs> to get covered and it's going to look like stone and then it can be taken down. You're like, I don't know about this whole wooden parsonage thing. It's horrible. Like, <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Not everything can, that can be built for the ages. No. No, yeah. sadly. These things if are only. If only. I did have one booky thing I brought for you guys. Ooh, booky is good. <clears throat> Which is fun. Because um, I was cleaning... I was cleaning out my bedside book stack because it was threatening to fall over on me. <laughs> and I found this. So it's Studio Yearbook 1, A Year of Creative Adventures. Creative Adventures. And it's by a local, um, a local crafty artist. Her name is Gina Sakelski. Um, and she... She sells online. She does a um, kind of cards, lettering, um, stamps, that kind of business. Right. But the super, well, I mean, she's just super cool. <laughs> but the really, I'm trying to find it now. Um, so she documented basically her year in her studio. Um, but the thing about her is she, um, she found Alabama Channon and she entered a contest um, <clears throat> and she won the contest and wow. she got to go wow. study with she got to go study with them. Wow. Um, so she makes can you see the skirt? Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. Whoa. Right? All okay, of so this and this stuff she does personally for herself. She doesn't sell this stuff. So um, describe that for those <clears throat> those playing at home. She does all of these gorgeous hand-stitched, um, hand-pieced, hand-made, she does not use a machine, clothing for herself. She basically makes most of her own clothing, and she makes clothing for her family. Um, and it's hand-stitched. Most of it is made out of um, T-shirt jersey, you know, knit jersey fabric. Um, but she does a lot of pieces that... Um, involve her hand. She's transitioned her handwriting fonts that she uses for her business into um, freeform. She freeforms the letters on the fabric and she stitches around the leather letters and then um, cuts out. It's, it, it's very it's fantastic stuff. <laughs> the stuff that like she does. Like cutting out, like having a, like cutting out a stencil. Right. Yeah. yeah, but she's free-forming it all. Right. <laughs> she does use some stencils um, for some other things, but her letters, um, yeah, she does all of herself. But so sh this book talks about, um, it just goes through her, her year in the studio. So it's like, you know, her stamp, her stamp making, which is for her business, and her handcrafting um, clothing for herself. She talks about um, making... Uh, she talks about meals and meal prep and things like that. She talks about, and she has little tutorials in here. Um, you know, she shows how she does. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, some of the needlework. Yeah, it's very, um, it's super inspiring. And she just kind of talks about a lot about her philosophy for making and her philosophy for crafting and how it's just enmeshed in every aspect of her life. And is, kind she of. Still, is that book still available? Um, from her, it is. You might be able to find it. She published it herself, so it's, um, but I, it's well, well worth um it's well worth the price that she's. I want to say it was twenty. I want to say it was twenty-five or thirty dollars. Um, so it's you know for what it is for the size of the book, um, you might look at it and go, man, it's expensive. But I go through it all the time, and I'm so inspired just by her um, her attitude and how she just creates the world around her every day. Wow. Yeah, so I highly recommend Studio Yearbook 1. And supposedly she's working on Studio Yearbook 2, but I haven't seen it come out yet. That's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I want because I want another one yeah. now. I love those little uh, things that give you insight into somebody else's life. Like that, I, I'm yeah. a junkie for stuff like that. That uh, Alabama Chanin or Chanin, yes. how say it, uh, Kay yeah. from Mason Dixon has done a lot of that. And, she's amazing. Um, I know at um, 
the last couple of stitches expos, um, they had uh, this thing where different designers create, basically create a wardrobe for a mystery client, and one person does knitted things, one person does felt, one person does sewing, and they've done um, the be some beautiful Alabama chain and just gorgeous gorgeousness. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen it a lot on um, Facebook, because Facebook, the woman who ended up being the recipient of it is local to me, Nathania Apple, and just some drool-worthy stuff. That's very cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. I only have one, one other thing to share, but it's a happy one. And it is happy is good. Bread. Yay! I made, this was French bread, and I, I actually mentioned it on the podcast that's coming up because it's so hard to get decent gluten-free French bread. Mm -hmm. I rediscovered a recipe that I'd found ages ago, and I thought, oh, I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, it's a different climate and everything. Oh, no, it worked great. So now nice. the whole house smells like bread, and I am happy because of it. Yay! Yay! And now I'm going to go eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Excellent. Wow. Good bread. Oh, good bread is good. Good bread is good. Yes. <clears throat> well, thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out with us. And thank you, Erica, for being back. And thank you, Don, for having awesome spindles to share. Yay! And book. I love that book. I'm going to go look for that book. Yeah, it is. Um, you should be able to find her on Etsy, and it should be available. If she still has them, it should be in her Etsy shop. But for a while, you could find them on Amazon, too. Cool. Rock on. Very cool. Well, thank you, and have a great week, you guys. Yeah, you yeah. too. And um, next week I will bring in instructions on, I mentioned I had a craft that can use your old CDs. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do some blue spindles, I will, I will talk about that next time. It's something I discovered when I needed a kind of brain dead transition filler craft. Um, and I, it, yes, yeah, a very potato chippy. And since most of us have about a gazillion um, old software CDs sitting around, um, we Perfect. can do it. That sounds great. So I'll have fun. that next week. Yay! Fun, fun. Yay! Cool. We'll see you next week. Bye, Yay. guys. Bye. Bye.